Hey everybody, Nick Makes Plays here. Today I'm going over my Sivir the Blanc deck. This deck's super cool because it adds two new champions together in one deck, Sivir and the Blanc. Both have five attack, and both make great use out of the reputation keyword. So I'll be going into why they work so well together right now. Here we go. All right, so this deck is a mid-range deck. It can be somewhat aggro sometimes because it puts on a ton of damage with the five plus attack units, which, you know, Every single health by a 5 plus attack unit directly is 1 fourth the enemy's health. 2 of those is 10 health, which is half the enemy's nexus, and so on. So, um, good synergies. They both have quick attack. They both have uh, good use making out of the vulnerable from the quick attack. And then we have reputation, a new keyword. Reputation activates if allies have struck for 5 plus damage at least 4 times this game. So, with reputation, this card costs 2. To draw 2, normally costs 4. Very good. So a lot of synergies here, but let's get right into the deck. First card is Dune Keeper. This card is amazing. If you're going first with it, you can push for four damage, two damage from this, and then one damage from this attacking, plus the next strike is one more damage. But I also like it defensively even more so. I feel that uh, you can summon this on defense, just one card, summons two blockers in one action, is really strong against aggro decks. So whether it's offense or defense, I feel this is a very versatile card for one mana. Uh, again, I particularly like it in defense being a one mana two blockers because um this deck has a lot of condensed units which that i mean it doesn't really go that wide it doesn't have like huge wide boards you usually play sivir or leblanc or what have you and this can really make up for if your opponent has uh more cards in the field than you, know, you can use those blockers so very versatile very good second card is exhaust this card is amazing in this deck i think this is actually one of the cards exhaust or one of the decks exhaust is best in Give an enemy minus two, minus zero, and vulnerable this round. This is super strong because it allows you to make use of quick attack. As I said before, LeBlanc has quick attack, Sivir has quick attack, and if you use the exhaust with them and you get the challenge, then the quick attack will just clean them up for free and work towards reputation. So very good stuff. One mana removal if it goes through. And focus, real quick, is like gem speed. So keyword for it now. Can't be cast in combat or while other spells are pending. So it can't be using combat or on the stack other spells, but it is a burst speed. So, very strong card. Next is Shapestone. Uh, give an eye plus one, plus one this round. If you summon a landmark this game, give it plus three, plus one instead. Usually it's the plus three, plus one. When one mana plus three, plus one, the health can let you live things like Mystic Shot and Get Excited and stuff like that. And extra attack is huge and helps you push damage for Sivir's level up as well as reach reputation if your units aren't already um, five attack, like using on Dune Keeper or House Spider. Very strong. The um, landmark you use in this deck is just Rock Hopper. Summons are Rolling Sands, but we'll get to that in a second. Next is Talus Spider. Uh, very good against aggro as well. Uh, two mana, 2-2 two, two that summons a 1-1. One, one, helps you deal with wide boards. But also just really good offensively. This card is generically good. It's one of the better cards of Noxus. Um, it's very versatile. It's basically just a 2-mana Doom Keeper in a way. You get to keep the Spider. It's not uh, ephemeral. So yeah, very good. Very good to deal with aggro, which is one of the harder parts of this deck if you build it differently. So I like it a lot. Next is Rock Hopper. This card is amazing in this deck. So... When I'm summoned, summon a Rolling Sands, 2 mana, 3, 1. So decent stats, I guess, for a 2 drop. But really, the Rolling Sands is the big thing here. So this enables Shapestone. It's the only landmark in the deck. So making the Shapestone go from a plus 1, plus 1, to a plus 3, plus 1 is already big. When enemy is summoned, destroy me to grant it Vulnerable. As I said, Vulnerable is really good with the Quick Attack keyword. Being able to get something Vulnerable and then killing it with LeBlanc, killing it with Sivir is so much value. And it also is really inconvenient for certain decks. Like, if you're playing it's Azir Lucian, they play Azir Lucian, you give it Vulnerable, that's a huge liability, right? You can just kill them with Sever or LeBlanc right after, so... You can put it at certain spots to make it awkward if you have a read on what your opponent's going to summon next. Very, very good card. Next is Shrek Glory Gloryseeker, another way to deal with threats, such as Twisted Fate, or, again, Azir Lucian, what have you. Five mana, or five attack, sorry. Five attack, two mana, five one, five attack. This is really good because it... And able to reputation easily while also being a decent removal. So good. Next is the Blanc. This card is crazy. So a lot of people thought this card was gonna suck when she came out. She's pretty good. She's at least pretty good in this deck. She's also good at Ash LeBlanc, but here we're talking about the LeBlanc Sivir. So she's a three out of five too. Yes, she has the Mystic Shot, but some of the best champions in the game. I think Twisted Fate and Ophelia is the best champions in the game. They also have a Mystic Shot. So if they have Mystic Shot, yes, you do lose uh, the trade. They use two mana spell for a three mana unit. If they don't, though, is where she really shines, which is honestly most of the time. Not everything has Mystic Shot in it, and they don't have it all the time. So on turn three, if you're attacking, then it's five damage. If they don't block her, it's just straight up five damage. One-fourth their health's just gone. Gets a reputation, and it works towards their level up. 
And if they do block it, they lose the unit for free because it's quick attack. Very good with the vulnerable from Rolling Sands off Rock Hopper and Exhaust. Uh, really strong. It's extremely easy for her to level up and also get the mirror image in her deck because all these uh, these units have five attack for the most part. Uh, I'll read what she does to level up. So she gets plus one, plus one, which is already big. The health huge to get out of Mystic Shot range and stuff like that. Each time I see you deal 15 plus damage, create a mirror image in hand if you already have one, which is cost by one instead. So it just creates this in hand, and this is good for going for game because it allows you to clone like a LeBlanc and then push for even more damage, like six more damage. Or he's on Sivir or whatever. You can use defensively if you really have to, just the FML card to block. But these are just kind of free. I mean, honestly, they're, they're just free cards, so we take those. Um, her champ spell, before you have Reputation, it costs four to deal two to anything. Not the greatest. It can be used as burn reach or removal, but it's pretty expensive. It's definitely expensive. You don't want to use it on units in the in the early game. It's usually not worth the four mana due to a unit unless you really have to. But I can give you burn reach if you need to and you're, you're still at four. But you should be getting reputation pretty fast, costing one and being able to use this uh, with the versatility it's intended, like a one mana missing shot on the unit or nexus. So very good stuff. Um, she's really strong to kind of hold down the field on three. She can be used for bloody business. An ally with five plus power strikes an enemy. Uh, very good. So Log's great. She kind of gets things rolling with the whole reputation right away. Next is Bakai Sandspinner. This card is so good. It read like it was okay. Like, you kind of see this card, you're like, okay, this seems good. This seems good. Like, you maybe expeditions. But how good is it in real rank competitive play? And it actually is phenomenal. It is a permanent vulnerable in minus one, minus zero. So, again, the threats like Twist Fate, Aphelia, Solution, Azir, whatever. You give these the vulnerable in the minus one, minus zero. If they stop your attack, it, it's still vulnerable. You're going to kill it. And that's really strong, again, with the quick attack against, like, Sivir. Sivir has Spell Shield as well, so you can't really deal with her trying to challenge an enemy with their quick attack. So this card is kind of just a 5 attack unit, a 5-3 that's a removal as well. Usually just trades by itself. You usually don't even need the, the Blanc or Sivir. You just put it on whatever. Like, you know, you put it on Lucian, he hits minus 1 attack. You kill it. Put it on Azir, you just kill it. Aphelios, kill it. Twisted Fate, kill it. And he lives. So very good. And works for reputation. So this card is super strong. I'm a big fan of this card. Uh, next is Bloody Business. This card is great. Uh, so good. Especially with Sivir and Runerunner because they have spell shields. So there's no way they can like interrupt you with, say, uh, a Vengeance to try and fit, make this fizzle. An ally with 5 plus power strikes an enemy. It's very versatile. So the thing about this deck is that these cards, Runerunner with the high attack and the spell shield, and Sivir with the high attack and the spell shield, these are already hard to deal with by default. Let's say I play Sivir, right? You're thinking, okay, well, that can trade with anything with pretty big health, pretty big attack, right? So it's already kind of invalidating a lot of your weaker units. And the second you play your big unit, like, oh, I guess I'll trade with it. I can't kill it with spells. It has spell shield. I guess I have to just bite the bullet and trade with it and use bloody business on their big unit, like Trundle or whatever. And then it dies and you just have field control and there's not really much ways around this. Every time they attack, you can try and like block in certain ways your reputation. Uh, so bloody business is extremely versatile, especially later in the game where you're drawing a lot of whispered words and you have field control and you just kind of save this for whatever the big threat is you can kill it and you're good to go. Next is Ray of Negation. This card is phenomenal. It's basically Deny. It's not quite better than Deny. It's, it's different. It stops the whole stack, but at the cost of more. The fact that it's in stream and the fact that this deck has access to Deny is pretty strong. A, a deck that has beefy units, again, with Sivir and like LeBlanc, they can't really deal with these high attack units and then you have a Negation stopping them for wherever they do try and stop it. Like, Say they have a big field and they try to avalanche your LeBlanc plus other cards and you negate it. It's like, okay, well now how do you deal with five attack units? So two Redivigation, kill an ally, destroy one of your mana gems, stop all enemy fast, slow spells and skills. It's just a, uh, it's just an eye, but it stops the whole stat. You want to be really careful about killing your own ally with this one, because if they respond like that mystic shot to kill the ally you're trying to kill with Redivigation, it actually fizzles the Redivigation since you can't kill your own ally because they killed it, then you don't negate anything. So usually you want to be using it destroying your own mana gems here. But that's okay, because the deny is usually an impactful part of the game, so I wouldn't worry too much. Just to play it safe, I'd mostly go for destroying one of your mana gems. Next we have Sivir. Sivir is really strong. A, she levels up in the deck. Any champ that levels up in the deck is usually a huge perk, because they don't have to be on the field to see it. They're just kind of leveling up while you're doing your own thing the whole time. So at the four mana, she has Quick attack and spell shield, so she can't really be killed by spells that easily unless they have multiple, which is expensive and hard to have. She's good with the quick attack. She can strike kind of for free, getting yourself reputation, leveling herself up. It's good with the vulnerable from Rolling Sands and Exhaust. And when she's leveled up, while I'm attacking, attacking allies have my keywords. So when you attack, it gives your whole field quick attack and spell shield. 
This can win games on its own, just because you kind of clear their whole entire field on your attack, and they have to block everything, so you're pushing with huge 5-plus attack units, and then you just kill them next turn. Also, if you run Overwhelm cards, or cards that give Overwhelm, like Might or Kato the Arm, I run one Kato the Arm. If you give her Overwhelm, it gives her whole field Overwhelm. You don't actually need that, because usually the attack is good enough with just the spell should have a quick attack. But it is a cute little alternate win condition that could help close out uh, games that otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Another big payoff for reputation is this card. So you don't main deck it, but you do have it in your deck by default as her champ spell. Reputation I cost 3. Deal 1 to a random enemy or that main nexus 5 times. This is pretty good because you want to clear their field, and then if you clear their whole field, then play it. It deals five to the nexus. It all the, the five pings go directly to nexus. So it's basically just a decimate for. It costs three reputation and does one more damage. So it does five damage to the nexus, and that's amazing for closing out games. If they only have like a unit and they're at three, you can go for it and try and do three to the nexus, or you can use it for board clears. So it's pretty versatile. I really think the best part is bursting for five to the nexus, though. So very strong card. She's a, a few win conditions in her own with the overwhelm, just clearing the board through this. Uh, ricochet and she's a good level one form i also want to mention that having this backed up with spell shield for bloody business is very hard to play around for your opponent like they only have limited cards that can kill sivir and then you can just bloody business and kill the ones that can deal with her and they can't stop you because of spell shield next we have whispered words so four mana draw two retire is already amazing that's the generic like salvage is a four mana draw two but with reputation, it costs two uh, less, so it costs two to draw four. That's a huge payoff. It's one of the big reputation payoffs of the deck. It's pretty hard to deal with the five attack units because they're so well statted. And then when you have a bunch of five attack units later in the game, you're drawing all kinds of more cards. They clear your units, you're just playing more if you drew more, or they have a way out and you bloody business it. It's very powerful. So this allows you to keep up steam in the early games by paying four, or in the late game, just kind of have a bunch of strong units and you're refueling, and there's just no way your opponent could come back. So this is probably one of the best cards in all the new expansion. Next, I have one Kato. Kato, five attack, so it already can trigger reputation. Support, give my support ally plus three and overwhelm. You have more likely to draw into it as a one of because you do have the whispered words. This is optional. Again, you don't need Sivir, or you don't need um, overwhelm with Sivir to win with Sivir. Just the quick attack spell shield's already good. But this is a nice one of to give everything Overwhelm and win games you otherwise couldn't, as well as giving it to Glory Seeker. It can push huge damage, becomes an 8-1 with Challenger, and you can win through that or remove big threats. So I think 1 Kato is good, and you'll see it more often with the draws. I run 3 Rune Runner. This card is absolutely amazing. It's a 5 mana 6-4 Overwhelm Spell Shield. As I said with Sivir, the Spell Shield's very good. With Bloody Business, they can't really stop you. It's just a lot of these higher static units you usually have to be dealt with through spells, and now you can with the spell shield. So it's huge. Also, the overwhelm just chips amazing damage. You can also use exhaust or rolling sands to kind of pick who she challenges and push even more damage. A lot of times you can attack with Rune Runner, and then she won't die because you can kind of manipulate their blockers with exhaust, or maybe they just don't have anything that can block her. And she gets two attacks in, and it's just so much damage off of this card. So it fits perfectly in this deck. Last but not least is Shunpo. <laughs> this card's funny because it, it actually used to be a huge meme. This card was never really competitive until now. Five minutes slow spell, deal two to an enemy, then rally, so you just kill one of their chump blockers, and then you attack with your huge field to win. I know some people run zero Kato with two Shunpo as the alternate win condition. I'm trying one and one. I actually like one of each. They're very different, and there's a lot of different ways to run cards in this deck, so... You can choose, you want to play two Kato, no Shunpo, or two Shunpo, no Kato. So this card is the real deal. This is probably the first deck it's really been viable in uh, at a high level. So yeah, it's just a rally from Noxus that you can push for huge swings with. So what cards did I not run? There's actually a few ways to play this deck. I'll make it brief. One of the biggest ones is different variations, the number of Kato and Shunpo. But you can also run... Black Rose Spy, Reputation, when I'm summoned, transform me into exact copy of the strongest ally I struck this round. A lot of times you'll strike with like LeBlanc or Sivir and then you'll play Black Rose Spy and they become that champion. You have two champions on the field now. Uh, I didn't run it because its payoff is usually after you have Reputation and I'd rather get a closer like Kato or Shunpo at that point. Um, other cards are Preservarium, another card to activate Shapestone as well as Refuel, but I feel... It's a bit too slow, and if I want to refuel, I have the Whispered Words. So, other good cards. 
This card's cute, but I, I wouldn't... Uh, you don't really have the one-drops for it in this deck. Usually when you go one-drop, then two-drop, it has five attacks, so... Uh, I'm opting out of that one. Calling Strike can be good. Pan the meta. Answers TF. Aphelios, stuff like that. One of the big... Oh, this is not a big one, but Might. People on Might. I prefer Kato, but Might is a cute little way to do this type of thing and give everything uh, overall burst speed when she's leveled up, so you could definitely try that. This card's okay. Reckless Trifarian for our reputation. This card's also okay. So this card's a big one. A Valiant Ally strikes a Valiant Enemy. Normally, this card would be amazing. I'm not running it right now, because it's kind of weak versus Twisted Fate Fizz. Twisted Fate Fizz is a really popular deck in the meta right now, if not the most popular, and they run elusives. So a lot of times you don't get the battle with the elusive, so you can't use Whirling Death when they attack. So I prefer to have cards that are better against uh, that deck. So this card's going to be in and out of the deck, but it's pretty standard to run this, actually, in a lot of the versions. Next is a cute card by the name of Reckoning. This card has been popping in and out. It's very good versus Twisted Fate Fizz. Very good versus Lucian Azir. Good versus a lot of things. It's not as great versus, uh, you know, they still use it versus Lee Sim, but it's not, it's not really going to be like what they care about as well as the Son of Trundle. But I've been seeing people play this. It could also be good versus Aggro in the mid game to uh, like, let's say it's a close game and they have a good board, you just clear all of it. I like it. It's very specific. I guess if you're running to a lot of decks in your elo that Reckoning's amazing verse, I would play it. I've been blown out by Sivir Reckoning decks. I mean, sorry, Sivir LeBlanc decks playing this. And a lot of times, it's not standard, so I'll be thinking, okay, they don't run Reckoning. I can't play around Reckoning, or it'll make my play a lot weaker. I'll play. I'll risk a word analysis. I'll play into Reckoning. They probably won't have it, and if they have it, I lose. And I've I've had scenarios like that. So um, you can catch people off guard before it becomes standard since it currently isn't so very good. But that's about everything. You can run like a Farron if you want top end. But I think that if I were to change this deck, I would definitely add like more Kato's or Shumpo's as my finisher. But let's get into the games. Playing as Thresh Hecker Myonia. This could be using Field Magicians or um, that new one mana. It's like one mana, one one elusive. You have Ephemeral, give it plus one, plus one. It could be Encroaching Shadows also, which I've lost to a lot, it's very scary. So I'm going to full mull here. This is actually a good card to keep a lot of the time, just to clean up with LeBlanc. But I want to ensure we get the early game units. You want to hit a House Spider or a Dune Keeper, just so we have something at the beginning, or LeBlanc. Okay, so we hit the House Spider. Pretty good. Decent get value. A pretty well-rounded hand here. A lot of this deck, like, at first, it seems really standard. But then you draw the Whispered Words that cost two, and you start just getting field control. They can't do it through units with Spell Shield. You're drawing all kinds of cards. Uh, very good stuff happens extremely fast. So we drew LeBlanc. This is great. This is what I'm talking about. This deck, they can't run Mystic Shot. There's there's no PNZ here, so what is he going to do? Right? Okay, Hunted Relic. That's good. So we're still going to attack here with the Quick Attack LeBlanc. Because it does give um, 5 damage for her level up, for Reputation, and also for Sivir. I'm not going to attack with this because 1 health is a health point that is sometimes weak when playing against the uh, the Shadow Wilds because of Wither Whale and Vile Beast. I still don't exactly know what he's playing. I have a general idea. I, th I think it's just like an like Silent Star, Silent Shadow Steer, Elusive Aggro type thing. And Thresh just gets, I don't know. Maybe it's just a mid-range version. All right, well, nothing too special here. I think we'll just pass. Maybe like Butcher's coming out. I don't mind losing any mana here. Because again, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Okay. So I guess something to do here would just be to give Vulnerable to this one. It takes one less damage with that attack directly. And then the Blanc can clean it up with her quick attack. We'll definitely trade here. This is fine. We get a trade plus it gets the the vulnerable there, so that's nice for us. We're already at 10 out of 15, so we just gotta get one more attack in. And we have the attack right there. So, I guess I'll leave my mana open for a, the Ray of Negation. We can also attack with this, because these will trade. We wanna play this one first, because what will happen if we go like this, Surprise. is that this will get 12 out of 15, and then this will level up, and it'll start over at zero. Like, it doesn't carry over, it'll be Exactly 15 out of 15, and then start over. So we got to make sure that we get this to make sure the two works towards her level up. 
I don't really think he'll have anything here. Ionia? It's probably just deny. Maybe he plays Death Mark and he plays the Scourge. He should be safe though. Alright, so. You saw here LeBlanc's way better than she looks. Because <laughs> if they're not playing Missing Shot, they just can't deal with her. She's great with the uh, Vulnerable. She's already leveled up. So she's already working towards the, um, so here's the two I was talking about. If you did the other order, it would have been 0 to 15 because it doesn't carry over. It just goes straight to 0 when you level her up. Okay, so pretty good stuff. Um, we'll burn mana. If he wants to burn mana, I'm down. What card was that? I missed it. Key Guardian? Okay. We could use Whispered Words here, depending on what he does. I'm only one away from the Reputation Trigger, though. So I'm pretty neutral using it now or later because we're going to lose mana anyway. This is kind of like a, a mutual pass. Like, we lose more mana than him, but it doesn't really matter. We have all kinds of options. We have draw cards, blockers, gives something vulnerable, protection plus damage output, deny. I mean, gives something else vulnerable. Like, we have all kinds of stuff. All right, so here we obviously can't pass because that's just, like, we're losing infinite tempo. Um, I am actually down to give this the vulnerable. <laughs> this has been, like, the answer to Thresh because now it can't clear this. Um, we'll wait till we strike. We need one more strike to make this cost only two. This card is really strong. Okay, we want to trade with that. Oh. That was that. Okay, so we'll play Chump Blockers then for the FMLs he's going to summon. We can actually do a lot of blocking here and get a mirror image. Like, she, she's, she actually gets her stuff way faster than she looks, so. Pretty good. Alright. Alright. I guess we'll just block with these here. We can't really get rid of that, so... I'll take the five. It's not really a big deal. I could also just block here to get the um, reputation trigger. I guess we'll do that. All right, we'll do that. This can go to one health. I, I don't even know if he's running Withering Whale, whatever um, deck this is. This is kind of scary, though. If he gets two Hecarims on the field, we're, we're done for, but I don't think he will. If we draw Bloody Business, we're particularly good. Wow, so we're, we're good. I'm still going to try and kill it first with the um, the free kill off the Vulnerable. We could even go here just to make sure it goes through because we have Spell Shield. See, we're drawing more cards now. This is just so good. Um, so how much damage do we need? Six damage? Six. This will get LeBlanc's uh, Mirror Image by itself. Yeah, this is pretty good. Um, we'll play it slow, and the next turn we can just kill them. We have tons of answers with Ray Negation, Bloody Business, Shapestone, so we should be good to go. This is at least definitely dying because of Spell Shield. So, very good. Glimpse. Okay, that's fine by us. I guess the only card I'm afraid of is um, the Harrowing, but we have Ray Negation, so. Rekindler could be good, too. We can't really stop Rekindler, but we have Bloody Business anyway. And this has Spell Shield, so as I was saying, if you try and bloody business things, they can't really stop you from doing it. Like, if they have Vengeance, it won't, it won't stop Rune Runner. They'd have to have Vile Feast and Vengeance, and then we could use Right Negation. So, I just don't see how he deals with this board. This is going to be great for going for a game later, too. So, here we'll just draw two. See what we get. Ooh, that's pretty huge. I maybe even should have just played Rune Runner and um, kept it simple. That is good. That is good. That is a lot of damage. I won't lie. Uh, but we should be fine. So now we have three buddy business. We can deal with all kinds of stuff. We have the Shun Po. Uh, very good. Very good. Yeah, it, it, it's the options are crazy because every card we have is so versatile. Okay. It's not like these all have one purpose. Like we can do all kinds of stuff with all these cards. I particularly like Shun Po because we're going to get a, a clean kill here plus a rally. They'll probably just concede when we play Shunpo, straight up. I know that um, there are some people that are amazing with this deck. Like the, I think the highest ranked people with this deck use 0k to 2 Shunpo, but um, there's all kinds of different ways to play it. So if I were to change the deck, I, I would mess around with the Kato and Shunpo ratio. Maybe even try like a Might or something. I, I guess maybe, like as I said, like with Sivir's level up, you don't even really need to get everything overwhelmed. Just attacking, clearing their board is great, and you Shunpo after that, and then you can win. I think he's gonna play Caretaker. Caretaker's pretty good. 
I think the longer I chill, maybe the better it's gonna be. Okay, if we play this now, and then he plays Caretaker, then we can attack first and kind of ruin what he's got going here. The limbs? We still rally though, right? Okay, that's that's fine. Sure. So he's just two mana here. Uh, he only has three mana to defend himself. This is on top of our normal attack we get next turn. So attacking here, and we're attacking right away next turn. Mirror Image is pretty strong here to get a, It's an exact copy as well, right? Yep. So if this was buffed or something, then like say we had Shapestone active and could actually get the plus three plus one, we could make two nine attack spell shield overwhelm units. Okay, so he wants to defend with those. All right. We'll just kill that. I think that we'll just let these die and then attack uh, next turn. We'll still attack the Blanc, I suppose. And this. This has the Overwhelm and this has a... Uh, we can discount the Mirror Image. Okay, it's fine. Now I can stop this. Um, that's all right, it's gonna happen next turn anyway. All right. So he takes three, discount the mirror image. Um, I think next turn, like right here, we're just gonna play Rune Runner. I mean, he can't ruination us, right? It's gonna, it's gonna have spell shield. And then we can just clone it. So either way, we're going to clone this and just go for a game. Um, he shouldn't be able to stop us here. We have Ray of Negation, Bloody Business, even a Shape Stump, you need the extra health. So this is looking like a, a win here, for sure. On saw the Shadows. Okay. So if we give it Shape Stone, you get 7 attack. And that's the difference maker for going for game if the overwhelm like if these are the blockers this is the difference it's pretty low committal just to get a plus one plus one um so yeah okay ggs yeah very good very good it was inevitable. all right we're playing shen fiora this is one of the most popular decks in the game right now uh very generic deck it's tier one so LeBlanc's very strong in this matchup because the five attack means they have to have barrier or a spell with Fiora to trade with it. And if they don't, we just push for damage. So pretty good. The rest of our hand could be like Rock Hopper is pretty annoying for them considering that it can hook Fiora. I like Exhaust against them as well. If we were going um, attacking on turn three, we could place an Exhaust at the same turn, which would be pretty huge. Something cute we can do is we play LeBlanc and he tries to kill it with this. We can buff it with Shapestone and then have it live. And that's a pretty big deal uh, to get the the kill and five towards her level up. So we'll just pass here, bank the mana. River shape the land. He plays River Shaper. Hmm. I think House Spider is really strong here. Let's just keep it simple and play House Spider. We can do this more offensively next turn. Sweep them away. All right, he's going to... He yeah, doesn't say to get that one. Um, we'll give the shape stone the plus one plus one here. Allows us to trade. If it goes through, we could sharp sight to protect it, but then we're just getting the sharp sight out of the way, so it's not really a big deal if that happens. Alright, I'm liking the way this is going so far. We'll bank three of our mana here, and we'll play LeBlanc. Ooh. This is really annoying for them, trust me. <laughs> but we'll play LeBlanc here. If he plays Shen and we use Exhaust, then even if he has Sharp Sight, it won't be enough to kill. Alright. Pretty good here. This either goes through or he uses Sharp Sight in a trade. Doesn't matter to me. He did get a spell off the River Shaper, so that could have been a Sharp Sight. Uh, single Combat, again, won't do anything. So it'll just. Like, it doesn't work. Just she'll live and then Quick Attack will finish. All right, pretty good. We get the free kill with the Blanc on the Fiora. That's huge. That's really important. Can he deal with this? Okay, it seems he can't deal with this. Um, 
We can't really do much about that. He does have to summon another unit for this to get the challenger. Okay. Interesting. All right, I'm gonna play Rock Hopper here. I don't want to play this because in case he has repost, I would not like to have um, this repost and kill a Rune Runner. So we'll block here and see if he has repost. I could use this, and I'm not sure what we draw though. I don't really want to know our mana yet. I don't think we have a card we could draw for two because we can't use Exhaust during combat. We have to use it prematurely. So we don't want to waste uh, too much mana. So we'll just do this here. Something great here is that this gives vulnerable the next unit he plays, so Sivir can clean that up pretty nicely. I don't want him to know we have Sivir, so let's just let's just bait him out with Doomkeeper. See what he does. Might walk into the Rolling Sand Strap. All right, he walked into the Rolling Sand Strap. Very good. It could be annoying here if he has Repost. But it's a risk I'm willing to take. It's not like a hard punish. We're 17 out of 35. We get a lot of damage in here, and then we can try and draw another Sivir later to finish. Ooh. Ooh, that was a good counterplay. Um, okay. Play Dune Keeper. Push for even more damage. What we can do here is go like this. We can exhaust like this, and then push for a ton of damage. Sarah will be almost leveled up at this point. This is our best play. I, I think this is good. Yeah. Play on our post a bit like this. All right, pretty good. We're now at 28 of 35, they're at 11. They have a bit more cards than us, but we can easily just draw Whispered Words and get right back in the game. And we drew Whispered Words, we're back in the game. We need to get one more strike. So this will actually have the quick attack, which is a unique answer to Sivir. It doesn't really happen that often. So I want to Whisper Words now. It would be nice to get bloody business, but I think that he could just repost or use deny or whatever and stop it. Let's just pass here and keep him guessing. Maybe make him mess up his game plan a little bit at least. It'd be nice. This was actually really annoying to hit Bryce too to stop us here, but that's okay. Alright, we're gonna go offensive here. We'll probably play Rune Runner into Rune Runner next turn. Once we get a strike in, we'll refuel for two. If we draw into our, our last Whisper Rewards, that'd be a lot of refuel for very cheap. Okay, so he, I really think he has Repose. This is where Draven's Rolling Death would be. Uh, not in this exact interaction, of course we can't use it. But it would have been good in general. In this matchup. We could have used it when they challenged and tried to force out Repose. That's interesting. Very interesting. Let's play Rune Runner. See what happens here. We can't use this on her. I'd like to tap her uh, a bit lower. First, maybe make it waste her a post. Alright. So this is game. He, he does have to do something. Okay. If he has her post here, that's fine. That's fine. We get out of the way. So now when we um, get the damage, the barrier's gone. We can try and shun Po. He goes to two. He can't use single combat here or anything like that because we have, um... Okay. Because we have the, uh, the spell shield. I'm gonna hope for no deny here. Seems to be the game plan. This is huge payoff. He doesn't have deny. That's deny. Oh, it's sharp side. Okay. That's fine. So, we can draw bloody business, as well as we can just kill this and, okay, or we can just go for game, so. <laughs> that sounds a bit better. Alright, cool. Nice game. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I love this deck because it's a new way to play mid-range. It's kind of unique with the whole 5 plus attack unit thing, and the spell shit on them is very hard to deal with. This deck also has a lot of room to be refined. One of my favorite parts is deck building and theorying, so... 
I'm going to enjoy tweaking it. I kind of want to add a second Shampoo. We'll see what happens. I'm going to be making tons of videos this week of all the new decks. So feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitch where I play them live. Um, love to see you guys there. So I'll catch you guys later. Peace.